Hello, Miriam. Hello. <laughs> Erica Lindbeck, the talented actress behind the voice of Miriam, is here with us. We've just finished recording all of her lines, all of her many, many lines. All of my lines. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to pester her with a few questions for the fans. <laughs> no worries. Awesome. Okay. So getting right to it, uh, what characteristic of Miriam's do you relate to or even just admire the most? I like her determination in the face of adversity, I would say. Sure. Is my number one thing. I think, um, I think you know, what she went through was obviously incredibly, incredibly difficult um, and a choice that she could have decided not to make. Sure. Also. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's... that's... Very, I'm very proud of her. It's hard to, to do... Um, it's hard to do to do what's right sometimes. Yeah, believe me. Especially I... at, at the amount of self-risk yeah. that she was doing it at. So. Absolutely. It really puts into a, a comparison all of our little daily struggles. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so if there was one thing of yours that you would have Miriam wear, what mm -hmm. would it be? I have a lot of really cool boots. <laughs> like kick-ass boots, so I would probably just loan her some of my boots. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's pretty cool because there's a uh, a lot or of maybe some of my chokers. I wear a lot of chokers. Oh yeah. So yeah, I'd be like, here, try this, wow. girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure that uh, it would fit her theme because yeah, uh, totally. She's got the whole like gothic thing. Oh and, yeah. Um. So if you had a little demon familiar, a little you know, I'd imp love or to something. have a demon familiar. <laughs> <laughs> when we all. Uh, and it followed you around and gave, you know, just total obedience to your every order and whim. What would you have it do? I would have it go grocery shopping for me and do my laundry. <laughs> and smite my foes. Sure. Okay. In, <laughs> yeah. in that order. At no of, personal uh, risk to myself. Of course. Welcome, Ben Diskin. Hi. You're the voice of Johannes in Bloodstained mm -hmm. and so many other great characters in games, anime, and more. Like fan favorites, Joseph Joestar from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And Bond from the Seven Deadly Sins, <laughs> just to name one or two. So let's play one of my favorite games. Okay. Bother the voice actor for an interview. <laughs> let's do it. Here's the first question. You've had an impressive start to your career, providing your first voice acting role at the age of 10. Mm -hmm. If you could travel back in time and talk to yourself as a kid, what advice, professional or otherwise, would you give yourself? Well, I mean, first of all, I'd just say buy Google. <laughs> I mean, I mean, just no. no. Uh, I would probably say, uh, um, <laughs> get good faster. If you could do that, that would be great. Because <laughs> it was a long road to get to where I am, and uh, sensibly, I have a lot further to go. But um, yeah, you know what it is? Learn to get mad. Because when I was a little kid, I was like always the happy-go-lucky person, and sure. anytime somebody would have to direct me to act, they'd be like, "Okay, you're angry." Grr! No, you're angry. Ooh, like, no, you have to be mad. Get mad. And I would drive everybody <laughs> insane. So um, uh, learn learn to get more in touch with your emotions, kiddo. How about that? That's that's <laughs> excellent. That's amazing. So next up, Johannes is really intelligent, mm -hmm. bookish, and arguably the cue to Miriam's James Bond. Do you see yourself in the character in any way? Um. Well, I'm not handy. So definitely not that. So like making stuff, no. It would uh, if I were J Johannes in real life, I would just hand her like a, a two by four with some nails stuck stuck in. Like here you go, there's your weapon. Have at thee. Um, but uh, I used to be bookish. I used to be book smart. Then I realized I didn't like school, so I stopped reading, and now I'm an idiot. Um, so basically, not a lot, not a lot in common. Uh, he's a lot smarter than I am, and uh, better with his hands. That's gotcha. my guess. So crafting would take a hit. Oh wow, yeah. <laughs> Dominique is played by Frida Wolf. Hey there, Frida. Hi. <laughs> so onwards with our cast interviews. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Number one, Dominique's radiant looks, her holy profession, and angelic voice will make her very popular. Would you like to see her in her own side adventure sometime? Yes, obviously. Absolutely. She was super, super, super fun to play. I can't wait to actually see this game. I've been following this since the Kickstarter few years back so it's uh it's a gift to be a part of it this far in to development and this close to release so yes please more dominique you're totally <laughs> biased totally biased no i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> and i'm sure that's not going to spawn uh tidal waves worth of fan speculation and yeah no. anyway just made my life harder let's let's move on uh what characteristic of yourself is most shared with dominique <laughs> telling people what to do <laughs> uh, it is a subgenre of games at this point. Um, Frida tells you what to do in a game so you don't die. So, of course, just bossing people around and bossing the player around. And uh, I love that 
uh, I'm mostly bossing Miriam around, who's played by Erica Lindbeck, who is actually a very good friend, who I also boss around in real life. So this is more like art imitating life. So it's like a Bloodstained Inception moment for you. Yeah. Nice, nice. So Dominique uses magic, weapons, and everything in between. If you were in her place and living her adventure, what spell, power, or weapon would be your favorite? Fire! Fire is an easy one. I don't know, there's a castle. I just don't wanna... How, how fast would it just like turn into ash? You just firebomb it. Because you can't, you can't poke it to death. You can't scream at it. Fire. Fair enough. N nuclear fire. That's uh, that sounds like a good option to me. Out of the darkness and into the light comes the voice of Alucard from Symphony of the Night. Robbie Belgrade himself. Hello, Robbie. Hi. It's uh, very interesting to have you. Uh, hopefully, everything works out because you're in Japan right now, and we're here in LA, and. Uh, uh, I've been a disembodied voice before. Hopefully, uh, you don't mind taking a few questions for the fans. No problem at all. Uh, the uh, Trans-Pacific thing is what I've been doing for the last few years, so it's perfect. <laughs> Great. All right, so first question. Have you ever heard of or played an Egovania? Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm sorry. I, I, had, to, I had to do that. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the process for getting into your roles for Bloodstained and how your previous role as Alucard influenced that process, if it did at all? Oh, I mean, it definitely influenced it. I mean, I don't think I'd be here if it wasn't for my role in Alucard, so I'm, I'm very grateful for what that opportunity allowed me to do. It's been, uh, you know, really fun. Um, of course I can imagine. Yeah, it's funny because I was kind of out of voice acting for about 10 years when I went back to America in 2006. Uh, there were a lot of unemployed actors over there. And so, you know, they were working and uh, it was hard to break into that scene there. So I did other things, you know. But, sure, sure. Yeah, understandable. So uh, you're lending your talent to Plus of course, and other projects like Lacard Chronicles 2 and Wallachia Reign of Dracula. By continuing to actively keep the legacy we all love as fans alive, you in turn will definitely forever be remembered. If there could be a character dedicated to honoring your memory uh, and your role in this amazing journey of Egovania's, what would that character's most prominent characteristic be, aside from, of course, an amazing voice? Whew. Um, darkness. If you were to get onto your own sort of crest and crusade, and you are basically Miriam in real life, yeah. defeating the castle, what would be that sort of favorite weapon or spell that you would use? A whip, <laughs> obviously. Fair enough. I, I should. They're fun and they're sexy, <laughs> and there's and, and I can keep some distance between myself and my enemies, which I would really appreciate. That's that's <laughs> actually a good that's actually a good reason. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I should have seen that coming. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is uh, a bit of a longer question that comes from our community. I'll try and shorten it a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Miriam would be a normal girl, if not for her fate uh, that thrusts her into tragedy and, yeah. you know, unimaginable power and a debilitating curse. Mm -hmm. uh, so she has to grow up fast and she loses touch with that humanity. Mm -hmm. How did you really strike a balance to make her relatable and human, but not ignoring those things? Um, I feel like that was very written into the story, very much so. Um, and there wasn't a ton I had to do. I mean, I think acting is just being human under different circumstances, and this was no different. Um, and I obviously I can't spoil, you know, the story, but uh, but that's kind of that's that's how I always approach characters is keeping them as grounded as possible while still going through these, you know, crazy circumstances. Uh, so Johannes is also uh, a really skilled alchemist, of course. That's his <laughs> whole thing. If you could perform alchemy. Would it be the traditional kind or the full metal alchemist kind? And what would you make? Well, let's see. That should answer your question. <laughs> I got you. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I would probably, um, boy, I don't know. I would probably, I'd probably make gold. I'd probably do the one thing you're not supposed to do as an alchemist and right. make gold and ruin the economy. And then just like retire rich, but then everybody would find out what I was doing. And then I'd probably be hanged, I guess, in this universe. Sure, So, sure. yeah. I'd make a lot of bad life choices, is gotcha. basically what I'm saying. Gotcha. So somewhere along there, you get a Philosopher's Stone and just bad uh -huh. things would happen. Yeah. Understood. <laughs> no, no alchemy for you, then. No. <laughs> uh, what does your prep look like for getting into a role? Uh, my prep? Oh, um, uh, <laughs> there's a sketch from Family Guy. 
Oh my gosh, I've got to be Richard the Eighth. Hello, hello, hello. Got it. That's my that's my prep. It's I wish I had something smart to say, but like no, it's just I show up and I go, oh okay, I guess I'm gonna be this guy today, and and I try to figure it out on the spot, and hopefully nobody ever figures that out and sees this and realizes what a hack I am. So you're telling me I should watch my back because you'll be waiting for me outside to yeah. hide the secret and to hide this. Yes, got it. Roger that. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, uh, we're gonna try and keep it serious okay. and, and professional. Uh, best girl, Miriam or Dominique? <laughs> I would have to give it to Miriam. I got it. I, I, I'm a friend of Erica Lindbeck's, so yeah. Fair enough. I got. I, I, if I cross her, she will kill me in real life. Fair enough. Have you met enough. her? Whoa. Uh, what was it like getting into the role? Any challenges that stick out? Uh, being nice and gentle all the time. One of the number one directions I get, just generally in life, is can you just be a bit nicer, nicer, please? <sighs> uh, so keeping it light and happy and sweet, even though, you know, we're fighting the minions of hell. A bit of a challenge to not, you know, panic. That sounds fair enough. I don't know what those people are talking about, though, because you've been super nice. But anyway, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Uh, last but not least, uh, without spoiling anything, of course, what's something you would say as advice to any one of your characters, because you don't do just Dominique? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and don't tell us who it is. Oh. Uh, all my characters have some interaction with Miriam. Um, I would have asked her to go grocery shopping for me um, in addition to favors. Just like general, you know, I'm, I'm kind of low on flour and sugar. Um, can you go ship some packages for me? Just like general more errandsing beyond like, you know, stuff for points or, or leveling up. Got it. Well, that definitely doesn't sound like a boring fetch quest to me, so I'll make sure to get eager to put that in the game ASAP. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, next question. What was it like getting the news, for you personally at least, that you were being cast for Bloodstain? How did, how did you, you know, feel about that? Oh, it was great. I mean, it all happened really serendipitously. Right at that time, I had also been invited to uh, go out to the East Coast to uh, participate in the too many games.com convention and just meet my fans which i didn't even realize i had really so it was great you know <laughs> and then i get out there and i actually met some of the people who were involved with the bloodstain project so it was really fun and i got to you know just meet people that had grown up listening to my voice it was really amazing for me wonderful yeah no, i can uh, i and everyone out there can only imagine how, how that must feel but absolutely makes sense uh, so last but certainly not least, because we don't want to, you know, keep you there all day. Do you have a message that you'd like to give to all the fans out there in uh, English and uh, Japanese? Because we know that you uh, speak Japanese wonderfully. Well, I, I just like to say I'm very, very grateful to everybody for their support. That you know, not only for uh, um, the stuff I've done up till now, but for this project, for the Kickstarter that made uh, Bloodstain happen and all that. It's great, and uh, you know for your uh, enthusiastic uh, encouragement. Really love it. Very grateful. Uh san no support wa totemo arigatou gozaimasu. Hontoni kori kare demo yoroshiku onegai Yeah? Perfect, wonderful. Well, uh, Robbie, thank you so much for all of your hard work and your time and uh, dedication to the project. and the fans and, and just really Egovania's in, in, in general. It's it's really been a, a pleasure working with you and uh, hopefully we will, uh, we and the fans at large will uh, see you again soon. Yeah, really. I, I look forward to going forward in the future and doing some more, so let's keep it up. Thank you so much for everything. You've been amazing and thanks for taking some time with us as well. Uh, and I hope we get to see you sometime soon again. Thank you for having me. Please enjoy Bloodstained. Well, thank you, Ben, so much for your role, for your talent, for thank taking you. a few minutes with us and the fans, and uh, sure. hopefully we'll see a lot more of you. I hope this game does well. It looks really awesome. Thanks a bunch. Thanks, Ben. Cool. Well, uh, we don't want to keep you here all day, and uh, <laughs> you've already been extremely gracious, oh, and uh, I'll just say, because I'm sure that all the fans would kill me if I didn't, thank you so much for all of your hard work, and it's been I mean, all, all of the actors that we've had have been amazing, of course, but yeah. uh, I don't get sick and tired of saying it ever. So, oh, so thank, well, you thank you really, I mean, just 
from the bottom of all our oh hearts. Oh my gosh, thank you guys. I'm this was I'm so stoked to be a part of this project. Thank you so much. Thanks for making it and thanks for making me a part of it. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Erica. Yeah, of Talk course. to you thank soon. You. See ya. How'd you feel about recording for Bloodstain? <laughs> Great. Good to hear it.